Hi everyone. The learning objective for this section is what is the Web API services? How are we going to configure Web API services into Blue Prism tool? How we can configure APIs in our Blue Prism process and objects? We'll also talk about what are the key points that you need to keep in mind when you are configuring Web APIs into your process. What is BP skills? There are a lot many skills has been published by Google, Microsoft and Amazon in recent days. And then also we'll see how we're going to use all those BP skills into our process to make our process more intelligent, right? So let's talk about what is a Web API services. You can think Web API services like a connector to third party applications, which provides a flexibility to call and use those services through an application programming interface so that we should be able to use the services provided by the different vendors into our application. For example, if you talk about the cognitive AI capabilities, those are given by Microsoft, Google, Amazon and many others can be used in a Blue Prism using the API services. I'm not going to discuss about what API is all about what is the REST API and how it works because that's uh, beyond the limitations of this course. We're going to talk about how we can consume the API. Those are being provided by the different providers. Say for example, if you look at the screen, there are a lot many APIs that are available on a portal, which is the DX portal. Along with, there are also third party vendors who those are providing the API. If you talk about human in loop and chat we can we have an api for apn and trust portal if we talk about the email we have an api from google microsoft ibm and all other leading providers similarly for natural language processing we have apis from google ibm microsoft and many other third party providers similarly when we talk about the invoices pdf and image processing we have api from abby we have api from microsoft we have api from google so what I'm trying to explain here is for many services, we are dependent on third party vendors and we need to use the services provided by third party vendors. Say for example, for invoicing, we are dependent on Abby or Cofax or maybe you can name it any, you know, third party vendor. Those are providing services and it is necessarily to integrate those into our processes. So Wave API is a way through which we should be able to consume those, right? How are we going to configure it? Blue Prism has recently come up with some update. So if you are, have seen 6.4 plus newer additions, you should be able to see it into a system tab. But if you are not seeing the newer addition and you are still working on Blue Prism 5 or Blue Prism 6, you won't be able to use the functionalities of Web API services. In general, it's provide a flexibility so that you can configure lot of APIs at a central location and those can be used across the different processes and objects. It provides a reusability concept so that once configured Web API service can be consumed and can be used in a many processes, right? Let's look at how we're going to configure the Web API services. As I discussed briefly that this is available only after the product version 6.4 and above. If you are still using 6.2 or 6.1, or 6, you won't be able to say this. This is first time introduced in 6.4. The For configuration, what you need to do is you need to go to the system tab and on system tab, you'll find a Web API services in a navigation tree. And if you click on add services, a new pop-up window will appear, which will look exactly like what has been shown into the image. And there you need to configure the various sections of your API so that you should be able to consume it. Don't worry about all these details. We're going to discuss about what these all details are and how we need to work upon because we'll be also looking at a real working example of the currency Web API where we're going to configure the Web API into a Blue Prism process and then we'll use that API to get the result from a third party provider. All right. So let's move to the next slide and see what are the key important parameters or parameters we need to define before using a web services, right? 
all right so as i talked about the web api definitions will require all the data which is required for blue prism to know how it going to call the http request to the web api the data in the api definitions determine how each request is constructed it's also talk about what will be the required url what will be the http method that we going to use what are the information that we are sending to the third party provider in a forms of headers or if required authentications we going to also make them a request request will require some information that need to be passed to a third party and similarly will be getting some response from a third party that need to be consumed into blue prism right so while designing the api definitions you need to configure all those thing into a different sections and below i have described all those common section that we need to configure i'll quickly go through all these in detail but i'll also have live example when we'll be doing a web web api using the currency exchange you know example all right so what is the basic setting so the first thing that you need to see if i go at blue prism tool and if you click on web api and then you need to click on or add a new service and then this pop up window will appear right and on this pop up window the the first page will talk about the basic settings that you need to do here right so the basic setting would be the name and the base url you can also define the timeout setting used for the all api request so that in how many seconds the time timeout should happen all those details you should be able to do it on this part we'll talk about the actions at the end but before talking about the actions let's see what http headers are headers are used in the request for the api definitions then in general we use headers to pass the authentication informations we also pass some of the details right what type of the response we are requesting to say for example we are looking for response to receive in a json or we are looking for a response to receive in xml we configure those into http http headers right so in this web api configuration screen you are you you should see two headers part one is at the top which is common header so when we talk about the common header it will be used across all the web services method and if you are building some specific headers that need to be passed with some specific action will be we should be configuring that into action but if you want to configure something which is common for the entire set of the api methods that you going to configure then you should define that into common headers similar to the common headers there is a common parameters right common parameters are those which are common to all the api calls and if there is a particular parameter that need to be sent with the particular method that could be defined into the parameters at the action level so you can think like let's say for the example we going to use api provided by the google right google has provided you different actions right some actions are get image post image get image informations post image information and all those right so we can configure one api definition which is called let's give it a name called google image api then we can configure the base url whatever the settings that we need to perform for all those actions those are common to all those actions like passing uh, authentications or you know bearer token those can be set up into common header and common parameter and common authentication part but something which is specific for the action say for example for sending a image i need to pass the image path and image id those will go into the action part right the other thing that i would like to discuss here is if you see at the last navigation tree which is called response that's pretty important because that's where you going to get whatever the information that has been processed by the third party and it will be return in a form of a response object to you and it's our responsibility how we going to consume that response into our system you should be able to extract the data from the json by parameter by using the parameters but for the basic example that we going to build today we'll use it as it is right we'll talk more 
about these all you know different navigations when we actually start working on the wave exchange api but for now these are the few points that i would like to discuss about you all right so now we have briefly talked about what are the things that we need to take care right we have briefly talked about how we what are the things that we need to configure in a common part what are the things we need to configure in a common header part what are the things we need to configure as a part of the parameters and all those things we're gonna run and we're gonna do this example actually on a blue prism tool but before jumping into the blue prism tool i wanted you to give some explanation what exactly we are trying to do so in this example we are going to use a simple api which is being provided by a third party vendor which provides a live currency exchange rate by specifying the source and dis destination codes so say for example if you want to convert usd to inr or inr to usd you should be able to get the exchange rate for the given day right the api that we need to use is the given and shown here in this url right if you look at the url you should be able to identify that there are three parameters that need to be passed the parameter number one is a q which is a quantity or you can say as a quote that is the amount need to be converted then we have a, another parameter called from which is the base currency from where we need to convert and two which is the target currency to where we need to convert the exchange right we'll be doing four steps we'll be setting up the basic details then we'll be configuring the common header that we need to send for the each api definitions this api is a pretty simple because all the authentications and everything need to be sent as a part of the common header for more advanced authentication method we'll look at the other examples when we'll be dealing with ai ml stuff in next sections and then in the step 3 we'll be configuring the action which is the exchange getting exchange and configure the parameter and how those url to be built so that we should be able to use into blue prism process one thing that you need to know, know here is when this web api has been configured in a blue prism you should be able to use it as a business object into a business object or into a process so it's a really really cool feature where once configured web api can be used across multiple processes using their own authorizations and authentication tokens and it, it provides a better reusability of the code so let's jump on a blue prism tool configure this api and see how we should be able to use this exchange api to build our own process to provide a live exchange rate. See you there.